Today on the 50 pound brain, we're changing gears, we're changing fuel sources, we're changing power. Higgins is taking a little nap over in the storage unit, and we've roused from his slumber the Dorito. Some of the subscribers will recognize El Dorito, some won't. El Dorito is a 1976 Sebring Vanguard city car. Electric Beast from, 19, well, like I said, 1976. It was a brainchild of, I believe his name was Bob Beaumont from Club Car. And this was his answer to the oil crisis. OPEC oil embargo of the early 70s and the gas lines and all the stuff that us old people remember. Nowadays, it's going to be the same thing, only different with all the electric cars. Everyone's going to be lining up to get hold of the extension cord at the charging station. But this thing, yeah, it's kind of cool and kind of painful to drive. There's the there's the nuclear power plant right there. Eight six volt deep cycle discharge golf cart batteries. And there's the Spartan Dash. Gas gauge. Horn. Speedometer. And all these switches. I, I rousted this out of, out of the storage unit because I want to sell it. And all these switches have just failed from, well, you know, what, 1976? That's what it, we're almost 50 years old. 50 year old plastic switches. <laughs> So we need to give give it a dusting off and uh, take it for a rip around the block, see how it's running. I did put radial tires on it at some point when Mrs. O was driving this thing to work quite often when we lived three miles from her work. Um, we don't live three miles from her work anymore. So, and I upgraded now let me get a light. I upgraded the motor control electronics from the contactor controlled setup that it used to have to this high tech motor controller that actually uh, has a zero to 100% range now where you can throttle it better than the old contactor setup. Also upgraded the battery charger. It used to have a dumb charger under the dash under there that would throw power to whatever. This thing is more of a pack monitor, charge monitor. It'll tell you if your batteries are bad. It'll tell you all kinds of things, and it won't charge defective stuff, um, unlike the old one, which would, like I said, throw power to whatever. And if it burnt your car down, so be it. But let me show you the accelerator. I keep calling it the gas pedal, but it's really an accelerator pedal. I put all this in. This is a, I forget, but it's a, it's, it's a potentiometer zero to I think 500 ohms or 1000 ohms. I don't remember what. That gives you nice smooth speed control. Unlike the old, it was just a three, it was a three limit switch cam that changed the contactors in the back and it changed how the, the pack was connected to the motor. Two, two 24 volt battery packs in parallel or one 48 volt pack in series for speed control. So the body is some kind of DuPont. I can't remember the name of the plastic but it closely resembles ABS and uh, it's very fragile, so it is an Italian car. Um, and it, yeah, it shows it's 50 years, 50 hard years of life. Um, there's a, a users group that has these things and they love them and they share information and all kinds of stuff and I learned on the users group that people patch their holes by buying the Legos 
that closely resemble the color of their car and melting them in acetone to a paste and filling in stuff like that. I haven't gotten to that point yet. I do, <laughs> believe it or not, though, I do have the bag of Legos for when I'm ready to do some patching, which may be soon, I don't know. I may just give them to the hopefully the new owner. Oh, let me show you the power plant. <laughs> Here's the heart of the matter. 36 volt GE series wound motor. Plugs right into the transaxle. And uh, like I said, we throw 48 volts to it, so we overspeed it a little bit um, to get our whopping 35 miles an hour out of this thing. So um, it's this particular transaxle is not real upgradable. It's not great as far as being able to throw on bigger motors or better motors. Some of the later models do have a different transaxle that can take upgraded motors. And some people put like 96 volt motors in this thing and put, you know, a brushless setups and all kinds of space age stuff going on. I thought I was doing good with just an upgraded charger and upgraded motor controller, but you can get really crazy with them if you want to. I don't live in a place where this is real conducive to daily operation or to where it is sustains my lifestyle in any way, shape, or form. Like I said, Mrs. O liked to drive it because it was an attention getter. And it still is, but got too many too many vehicles in the old stable and I don't fit in this car well so I'm not a big fan I bought it because it was dead and I saw it as a challenge to get it running it now runs and stops and does a bunch of things like it was designed to do so it's no longer challenging and it's, no, it's not fun to drive because it goes slow and then you're basically the hindrance to rush hour traffic in it and you'll get a lot of um, obscene gestures in the car if you do decide to drive it during rush hour so it's time to go to a new home to a good home like a free cat it's time to go but I don't want to give it away in its sad state with all the switches busted I'm going to try and find um, replacement switches because the, the last time I did check which was a while ago they were still available from the company they didn't have the cool legends in them but um, the switches were physically the same so and maybe I'll do uh, swap out all the bad switches and make everything work and then yeah maybe somebody's cool little car to go tool around the neighborhood or whatever they want to do it's up to them so the old Dorito, like I said, it's a ripper. <laughs> Brakes are super touchy. It's definitely over braked. The braking system is way stronger than it needs to be for this vehicle. See how much we can get her ripping in this neighborhood. We're at almost 30. We're breaking the law. Tell you what, the center of gravity is pretty stinking low in this thing because of all the batteries. So she's a quarter in machine. I did put radial tires on it a few years ago when Mrs. O was driving it to work quite often. But I do not want it to break into a bag of chips. So.
I'm going to run these batteries out a little bit and then go back and put it on another charge and get them woke up from their winter slumber. That, that's to the wood right there. Breaking. It's just one way flow of power out of these batteries. And here we go back into the Dorito cave. can go in reverse and this is kind of a cool switch because you can, it will not allow you to go directly from forward to reverse it has a mechanical stop you have to let up and then so keeps you from ripping the motor out ripping the gears out of the rear end um, it has 5059 miles on it since 1976 so, um, I don't know if that's high mileage or unbelievable mileage, but, <sighs> oh, let's see, let's see if we can get the, let's see all this stuff, the switch is turning in the dash because there's no keying on the ignition switch, let's see if the wiper works, I don't think it does, I don't think the switch just, failed. Like I said, the frost, well, didn't even light up. So, the high, the lights don't work. So that's what we have to cure. The hazards work. Oh, I got, I'm on the brakes. So, that's how simple of a system it is. So yeah, we have to cure that before I sell it to somebody. But I want to get this thing out of the garage. Get it out of the stable. Get back on Higgins. 